Today, we begin a new era. Hey! I have existed from the morning of the world, and I shall exist until the last star falls from the night. Although I have taken the form of Gaius Caligula, I am no man as I am all men. And therefore I am a god. Hello there. Have you fallen into an open manhole recently? Do you find yourself in the company of strangers? Well then you might very well be in the feature underground. My name is Hunter Lanier. Once again I am here for another review. This time I am reviewing Caligula colon The Ultimate Cut. Now Caligula The Ultimate Cut isn't your run-of-the-mill director's cut. In fact, it's not a director's cut at all. To better explain, I think we need to start at the beginning. So, the original Caligula, released in 1979, was written by Gore Vidal. Tinto Brass was brought on to direct the screenplay, and Brass pretty significantly changed a lot of what Vidal's original vision was. Uh, then above Tinto Brass, you have the producer of the film, Bob Guccione, who was also the founder of Penthouse Magazine, who then took the movie away from Brass and inserted a lot of, uh, one would say, gratuitous hardcore pornography into the movie in order, I would assume, to give it some sort of, if the movie didn't have any kind of artistic merit, at least it would have some shock value that would garner press. And by all accounts, this actually worked because while the movie was panned by critics, Roger Ebert famously walked out of the screening. It was actually a box office success and had the attention of the culture for a little while. This ultimate cut was put together by a film historian named Thomas Nagovin. I don't know how to say his last name. I apologize, Thomas. He found hundreds of hours of footage and put together a cut of Caligula that contains not a single frame of the original movie. So it's not like this ultimate cut has some stuff cut out of it and some new scenes put in. There's not a single second of this movie is from the original movie. The movie is either made up of alternate takes or um, alternate camera angles. And of course, all of the stuff that Guccione added into the movie to add the shock value, all of that is no longer there. What you have here is a movie that is attempting to get at what Gore Vidal originally had envisioned. So you're not even getting the director's cut. This is sort of like the screenwriter's cut by way of a historian, which makes it a pretty unique uh, artifact in movie history. And so this movie that has earned a place in cinema history, not for its artistic merit, but for being something of a novelty, this is in some ways its second chance to get past the novelty aspect and claim that it, ha it does actually have some value as a piece of art. I will also say that I have not seen the original Caligula. So if you're looking for a compar an exact comparison between the two, I cannot offer that. After I watched the ultimate cut, I did try to find the original Caligula, but it's not easily accessible. And if I'm gonna pay for it, I'd rather just wait for the Blu-ray to come out on September 17th. And that Blu-ray will have this ultimate cut and the original cut of the movie. Okay, now let's talk about the movie itself. Caligula is a movie with the reputation that precedes it. As for this ultimate cut, I quite enjoyed it. 
what the movie essentially does is that it dunks you in this marinade of debauchery and tyranny and it just makes you soak in it for three hours and to some people that sounds kind of like a miserable experience but there's something nightmarishly alluring about the movie as you soak in it it starts to envelop you and you kind of get stuck in this in this world and this really dark vision now much of this is actually achieved by way of the amazing sets and costumes from the production designer Danilo Donati, who was actually the production designer for uh, some of Fellini's movies, most relevant in this case, uh, Fellini's Satyricon, which is in the same visual ballpark. Now, this might be something that's unique to the ultimate cut, but the movie is filmed in a sort of very theatrical, head-on, 2D sort of way. You know, everything's very flat. The camera tends to be like right here or cl close up or it'll be right here. So there's a little bit of a two-dimensionality to it. And that's fine as a choice. But with how amazing the, the sets are and the environments are, I found that I really wanted to explore the environments more than the camera does. And this is no knock on the actors, but I found myself looking at the background more often than I was looking at the performances. Also, part of the aforementioned marinade is the fact that the movie does not have a traditional plot in that it's not a series of plot points with an arc with a beginning leading to an end, although there is a, a beginning and an end. Instead, it's a movie of moments, and these are scenes and moments that exist for extravagance, for horror, and sometimes for characterization. There's almost a vignette nature to how the movie plays. For an example of characterization, there's a scene where Malcolm McDowell, who plays Caligula, kind of freaks out in the middle of this thunderstorm and goes outside in the rain and starts doing this dance that he was known for doing as a child. And all the adults thought it was hilarious. And here he is now as emperor and king and... He calls himself a god, doing this little boy's dance. And it's sort of this moment where his, his boyishness rises to the surface in the most obvious of ways. And that's really what defines his character, is that he's a little boy. And then after he has this freakout, he wakes up and they put him in bed with his own horse in order to make him feel better. Kind of like how a little boy might you know, cuddle with his dog in his bed while he's sick. Here is Caligula cuddling with a massive horse in his bed. Great scene. If you want to get a feel of what kind of character he is or what kind of movie this is as a whole, go and watch that episode of The Twilight Zone where the little boy banishes people to the cornfield. That's this whole movie. It's Caligula banishing people to the corn cornfield and turning people into jack-in-the-boxes in an ancient Roman really horrific, more realistic sort of way. Won't somebody take a lamp or a bottle or something and end this? You're a bad man. You're a very bad man. And you keep thinking bad thoughts about me. And speaking of the horror, there are scenes in the movie that are legitimately horrific. The most horrific scene in the whole movie, and maybe the most memorable scene, is one in which Caligula, I won't even go into detail, but let's just say he abuses a man and his wife on their wedding day in the worst way you could possibly imagine. For extravagance, the scene that comes to mind is a scene in which Helen Mirren, who plays Caligula's wife, gives birth in front of an entire audience. And she's like chained to the to this stage like she's King Kong and a baby is crowning. And based on the internet research I did, this was an actual birth that was filmed. I don't know how true that is. However it was done, it's a great scene that actually kind of becomes sort of funny when he's talking up the birth of his son. And then the baby comes out and it's a girl and he has to sort of cover. Seeing this movie as a series of moments or a series of vignettes, however you want to put it 
is really the, the best way to enjoy the movie. The, the characterization of Caligula isn't very deep. You understand that he's a little boy on the inside, and he's a horrible tyrant, and that's about it. In fact, he's a character that's so despicable that the one redemptive aspect to him is his deep love for his own sister. And this isn't platonic love or family love. Or this, is, this is love love in the sleepy sleep same bed love. Okay? Now even though the movie isn't as detailed or as literary of a character study as Caligula might warrant, I will stand up for this movie's ending. And this is a spoiler, but it is history and this movie's been out a long time. So if you don't want to be spoiled, skip past this. The way in which he is killed at the end is so good. Here is this man who has wreaked havoc for the last three hours, believes himself to be a god, and he is killed and replaced in maybe 20 seconds. They just kill him and replace him as if he was never there. It's like watching a fry cook put together his thousandth cheeseburger that day. That is the casual skill with which the most powerful person in the world is killed and replaced. And in many ways, it's almost a more cynical telling of the Ozymandias poem, of the fleeting nature of power. Because in that poem, of course, the idea is that you see this powerful figure from however, you know, a millennia ago, and now they don't mean anything. The ending of Caligula takes that one step further because he was just alive 30 seconds ago and now he doesn't mean anything to anyone. This movie has a perfect ending to a not really perfect movie, but a movie that is nonetheless engrossing and pretty much always fun to watch. Oh, and for those who enjoy Malcolm McDowell when he's in that clockwork orange if frequency you get that tenfold all right well those are my thoughts on caligula the Calig all right those are my thoughts on caligula the ultimate cut let me know your thoughts if you were able to catch it in theaters i believe it is still rolling out to some parts of the country it will be on blu-ray on september 17th so look forward to that leave a comment below with your own thoughts on the movie and as well your thoughts on my thoughts like the video if you liked the video. Don't like it if you didn't like it. I don't want your faux likes, but I will take your charitable likes. As always, all I have to leave you with is the undeniable truth that every day underground is a good day.